Replacing his pathetic deck with an unstoppable assortment of extremely rare magic cards was an excellent idea, Master Merrick. <laughs> this is my most ingenious scheme yet. I took the things that mean the most to Yugi, his friends. Bruh. Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Geek News Anime Night, where we take a particular arc, in this case, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Battle City Tournament, and we go over each of the duels, we go over the positives, the negatives, we tell you whether or not we liked it, whether or not we hated it, or whether or not it just needs to die in a fire, and I have a feeling that's going to be said a lot in this episode. I am your host, Adam Mickelson, a.k.a. Drac. I hope everybody's having an awesome day or night when you're listening to this, and joining me normally would be my panel of fellow geeks and fellow awesome guys and generals, but um, let's all just be honest right here and now. Um, I have the Millennium Rod, and therefore they are my mind slaves. So at that point, let me go ahead and introduce you to mind slave number one, which is the Shadow Blazer. Uh, Shadow Blazer, you must now answer this question whether you like it or not. How are you? I cannot do the dual voices, but I'm okay. Okay. Well... Before we go any further, I need you to stand exactly where you are right now, especially now as I slowly bring over, via a crane, a ginormous sea-carrying box, and if you so much as move one inch from that spot, Alex, I swear to God, I will pull a Looney Tunes shenanigan so fast, you will wish you were the, the Wily e. Coyote falling down the cliff, all right? Do you understand me? <laughs> Okay, I hear ya. All right. And don't you be thinking about popping no cyanide pills or anything like that. We'll get into okay. that later. And of course, I also have my second mind slave here, Brinton Volley. Brinton, I would like to introduce you first, but first of all, I have to explain the convoluted, as convoluted aspect of these episodes, and I must be able to do so in a timely manner. So, hours pass. Now that I've explained the complicated dual rules that are going to be going on about here, and it took exactly 49 minutes and 55 seconds to be able to do, we can now start this duel. Oh, shit! Am I supposed to say something here? Uh, <laughs> no, no, we're both dead. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> and I actually got the time wrong. Damn it. I, I thought I had gotten it right, but no, it had to be 59 minutes and 55 seconds. But considering how long it took to explain the dual rules, it would not have surprised me if it took the entire 60 minutes. So at that point, we are talking, in my opinion, and I know some people are going to give me shit about this because I know some people actually like this duel. We are today discussing Yugi versus Joey slash Merrick in Battle City. And uh, this duel... Ah, <sighs> there's a reason I skip over it whenever I watch it, whenever I watch Battle City all over again. There's just, this particular arc does not work in the Yu-Gi-Oh! format. We will get into those details in a minute. But yes, this is Joey basically being controlled by Merrick to face off against Yugi in order to win the Millennium Puzzle. And of course, the power of the Pharaoh! So at that point, um, let's just really quick, uh, yes or no. Did you like this duel? Did you not like this duel? Uh, Alex, let's start with you. For the most part, did not like the duel. All right, Brenton. Um, I'm going to I'm not going to be over, overly dramatic. Uh, I also did not like the duel. OK, all right. That's good, because I'm going to be the one that's probably overly dramatic this entire episode. So thank you, Brenton. I, I, I appreciate you being the serious one here. I'm also just really tired, so take it away. <laughs> that too. Uh, I can totally relate to that as well. Uh, so let, let's go over this really quick. This is, for the most part, Yugi Moto versus Joey Wheeler. It does incorporate Joey's deck. However, uh, because... As we pointed out in previous episodes, Merrick Ishtar is just such a deck construction construction genius. He decided to add a couple of crucial rare magic cards in order to give the Pharaoh a hard time in this duel. But for the most part, it is Joey's deck. So we still have Yugi's spellcaster deck, 
uh, Spellcaster Warrior deck up next to Joey's Warrior deck slash Vegas Odds deck. Uh, that is not my commenting. That is you guys who are listening in going, yeah, it's, it's a Vegas deck. Just call it a Vegas deck. All right, cool. It's a Vegas deck. So there you go. We have the we have the mix up or the the setup of this duel. Now we can spend basically 60 minutes and explain the stakes of this duel. Because holy shit, there's a lot of them. For the record, this is not a Battle City duel. So at that point, no locator cards will be exchanged. Neither will the rare cards be exchanged. However, since this is entirely set up by Merrick Ishtar, he does dictate that a rare card must be given, and that is Yugi's Slifer the Sky Dragon. But if Merrick loses, which he totally won't, right? Um, he doesn't give up his rarest card or anything like that, <clears throat> because it's Joey's. So, the stakes of this duel. It is a 60-minute duel. There will be no shenanigans, although there will be plenty of shenanigans. There will be no shenanigans in this 60-minute duel because both Yugi as well as Joey will be handcuffed to a ginormous anchor that after 60 minutes will plummet to the seafloor, dragging both Yugi and Joey with it. However, if one of them drains their life points to the other's life points to zero, a box will open, much like Arcana's duel, which has the key for that corresponding uh, ankle cuff. Then at that point, that player has 30 seconds to unlock themselves and run the fuck away before the anchor totally doesn't destroy the fragile dock that is this duel arena. Not only that... There will be no interference in this duel, because if interference occurs, it just so happens that one Taya Gardner is also a mind slave. And if she if anybody remotely tries to interfere in this duel, she is sitting below a C. But I don't even know what they're called. Technically, they're they're basically like sea trailers that go on boats and it huh. will. Looney Tunes shenanigans style fall on her. Hence resulting in her death. This is all rigged up by Merrick Ishtar so that he totally will win. There will be no objections on that whatsoever, right? Right. Exactly. Except we all know that it's Yugi Moto. And ergo, he must beat the odds but we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> so those are the basic stakes of this duel. In terms of its stakes, what did you guys think of how this duel was set up? Good. I will say the stakes are good, right? It's certainly a little more than just the typical locator card or most prized card. No, it you makes know, sense. Yugi, yeah, Yugi's friends' lives are literally on the line, and Merrick is using them as his own personal slaves, and mind and play things right first we see with Taya and joey and then Taya has to be the bait to just kind of sit there as sort of the insurance against any outside influence yes so good there are good stakes here i can say for that much well and here's the thing uh for those who are wondering about the interference <clears throat> um according to merrick yugi has an annoying habit where his friends will tend to intervene and it just so happens that he came with Seto and Mokuba Kaiba. And so at that point, the authority figures are there and they could probably intervene. And so Taya underneath the box is more to keep Kaiba from doing anything. Because that way the, the duel can commence and Merrick can win. And therefore, he, he can probably then challenge Kaiba for Obelisk is, is basically his kind of frame of thought. Um, Brenton, what did you think of the stakes of this duel? I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what to say if I'm to be completely honest, because okay. I felt that this arc, this duel was completely and totally unnecessary. So I guess seeing as it 
was part of plot, then yeah, the stakes are pretty extreme because it is Merrick's last attempt to be like, okay, hey, I'm going to strip this power from you and take it from myself. So, at, at the very least, it's his last attempt before the finals begin. Because if he can succeed here, then there's no point for him to like try again in the finals. Right. He has exactly. what he needs, he can rule the world. At that point, he would have basically two Egyptian god cards walking in to uh, the finals and therefore would be able to dominate and Battle City would be his! <laughs> um, I, I will say as far as a villain type duel, this is good stakes for Merrick. Th this is basically Merrick showing I hold all the cards and I will win whether you like it or not despite all of the shenanigans that Yugi might pull out. The only problem that I have with this duel, and I will explain it as we go along, is a lot of people know this arc in a particular series where the friends are mind controlled and therefore you have to spend the entire episode or episodes uh, trying to win them back to the light. And so the fact that Merrick tried to put a time limit on this already kind of throws it into chaos a little bit because we already know Yugi is not going to be trying to win this duel. He is going to be trying to win Joey back. And we know that that because of that, there will be some kind of internal struggle between Joey and Merrick on who gets to control Joey's body. So the fact that this is all basically under a time limit really hurts the duel is what I'm saying uh, because mm -hmm. we know that these duels have to be fast and they have to, they, they have in reality, if like everything went barracks way, he probably would have had this duel done in like 10 minutes. He honestly would have, but of course it's Yu-Gi-Oh. So we have to explain all the backstory and all of the, the past dealings between the characters. And then you have to have the moments where Yugi's trying to quote, reach out to Joey, which is the stuff that basically drags this duel into I wanted to say mud, and then I wanted to say quicksand, but I think I need something else. Um, quick drying cement? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so at that point, um, <clears throat> let's get into the positives and the negatives of this duel. So was there anything positive that happened in this duel as far as you guys are concerned? And we're going to start with Alex, because Alex is, is kind of the one that is still fairly positive about it. So the I think the positives are when the show actually does focus on the duel for a change. Okay. Yeah, uh, I do think it's interesting to to watch how the moves are different. How Merrick is manipulating Joey's own deck <clears throat> against yes. Yugi, and of course how we kind of come back, circle back to Joey's prized possession of the of the Red Eyes Black Dragon now in Yugi's possession, and Yugi hoping to use that as his trump card to help Joey. Yes, I, I would agree. Like, I, I do think that the, the way that Merrick has set this up is that he could have easily won the duel. His The only thing that holds against him is Joey. And of course, Joey being the Rocky Balboa, he has to fight back. So that, that was really the only thing that held Merrick back. But a lot of the, the super rare magic cards that um, Merrick put into his deck uh, were, were very... Uh, very dangerous. In in particular, the ones that attack life points directly. <clears throat> those those are the ones that really do kind of kick Yugi's ass for the most part. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Brinton, what what was positive about this duel? That nobody died. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a positive in the form of in in the case for four kids and kids WB. Yeah, like, like what Yugi saw out to do the entire time, which was literally not play the game and try to free his friend's mind, worked. He did it. Yay. Okay. Um, I will say a another positive th of this duel is the fact that Merrick is once again so far away from this duel that he can actually start fulfilling other agendas that was actually a good idea because while he's 
controlling Joey and he's controlling Taya, even though he only has to control Taya until she's properly bound in a in a metal chair of doom. Uh, then she's just boned. At that point, he only has to control Joey. But while he's doing that, he's also working with Odeon to a secure locator cards for both him and Odeon to enter the finals. Uh, and then also have Odeon go and search for Serenity. Which this is going to be one of the other complaints that I have about this duel, but the fact that when Merrick finds out about Serenity, he actually tries to hunt her down while having this duel commence was actually a good idea. It actually did showcase him as a, a villain with a grander scheme that could be going on at that moment. Um, so I'll, I'll give that as a positive. Are there any other positives that we want to give this duel? I mean, I really liked the part where Serenity dived in after Joey. I thought that was very sweet. That that was that was an interesting concept. We'll we'll be getting back to that because that's technically like the side plot of this. Yeah, I know it's more of the side uh, plot, episodes, but that's yeah. how. But, yeah. Well, so and apparently just kind of gets to show you this duel was kind of unremarkable. Yeah. Um. And apparently in the manga, they actually had this as a a character moment for Serenity because I guess she was, uh, a. I don't want to say professional, but she she swam in school. So at that point, like swimming is is something that she does very well. So that was that was basically something to showcase Serenity as having talents of her own. So I'll, I'll give oh. that. Um, any other positives? OK, that's it for me. <laughs> Negatives. What did this duel do wrong? Everything. Sorry, I'm being yeah, honest. Everything. Uh, Brenton, I mean, I mean I was going to say, who would you like to go first? <laughs> go ahead, Brenton. So something that you had mentioned just very recently, Adam, that you stated being like a good thing that this particular duel did, I actually would disagree okay. was a negative for me. Um when Odeon had approached Merrick with, hey, look, I secured us locator cards. I just sat there and I was like, if you, this was something you were already going to do, then why go through all the drama of tr like kidnapping, mind controlling, and traumatizing a bunch of people? At that point, I would have just been like, okay, well, I failed a bunch. Let's try in the finals. Dude, go get locator cards. He, he, I just felt like... Here's something to add on to what you're saying. Why have Odeon do it when you could easily go up to a bunch of random duelists, use the Millennium Rod, boom. Oh, hand me your locator cards. OK. So, yeah, Odeon and didn't like need to do that. And and with the whole alliance that he has put together with uh, Bakura, it's just kind of like at that point, it should have just been, look, dude, Let's just get the locator cards. Let's just show up to the finals and let's try to take down Yugi Moto this way. Right. Obviously, what you're doing isn't working. There's no point to get his like we can take out his friends in the finals. So when that was like one of the very first things that was showcased and like introduced into the plot from that point, I was just like, OK, then all of this is just completely meaningless and ridiculous. Like, it's just completely unnecessary so much time a lot of has been where, wasted where, where poor odeon is basically merrick's errand bitch right that, that's basically what he is i i 100 <laughs> percent. <laughs> and the best part is is that he looks even more intimidating than merrick so okay i guess so i mean that that's like that's ultimately what made this whole duel just did not go well for me mm -hmm. at all. Like just period. I just felt like, again, I just felt like at that point, why even do, why kidnap, why mind control, why do what has happened? And. Well, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll so, tell you exactly why they did that because they introduced a millennium. I didn't that could control people's minds. That's why it's, it's really as dumb as that. They, they introduced the millennium around they're like, Oh, we should totally use this. We should have Merrick use it. And then, oh, uh, wait, now we have to do this whole arc and it doesn't really work in the format that we're working with. And yeah, I don't but they realized. Well, I mean, they established that the Millennium Rod controls minds. Yes. Yuki has already faced at least 
four opponents before Joey that where their minds were controlled yes. and where their minds were banished to this shadow realm because Merrick could not beat him. Yes. So it was just like, like this is the definition of insanity. I felt mm-hmm. in, I, like all of this was just so insane to me. And, and then it's just to share say that at this point, Pegasus's execution of his Millennium Eye is far better than Merrick and his Millennium Rod. Definitely. I mean, I mean, for sure. And it's making me realize that there was one good thing, like another good thing that I forgot to mention that this duel did well. And all because out of just, and this is because of what you just said, Adam. And that is that, like, Pegasus as a villain was just playful and fun. However, Merrick is just cruel. He is, he is just rotten cares only about himself, completely willing to step on everybody to get to where he wants to go, cruel. And I think the duel continues to showcase that. Otherwise, I felt that if he was already going to get locate, have Odeon get locator cards for them to be participating in the finals, there was no reason to mind control Joey. <laughs> nope. No reason. <laughs> no. In fact, it might have actually been a better thing to not mind control him. And then let's just say for the sake of argument, Yugi, Yugi catches up to Merrick. Basically start to kind of probe into Joey or Taya's mind like he is going to try and take control of them, but not really. He's just making it into a distraction. That might have been a better thing to do, in my opinion. And, and frankly, I think in all honesty, that would have been a lot crueler. Because it would have been play- it would have basically been toying with Yugi at that point. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I I fully agree with that. One hundred percent. I think that would have been a better way to go about it. Um, I will tell you two two major problems that I have with the utilization of of the uh, Millennium Rod in these particular episodes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get the silly one out of the way. But I'm just saying, if I was in Merrick's shoes, I'd be doing this. You take so a majority of the rare hunters are male. So at that point, you get a hold of a high school girl and you don't immediately have her coming out in a Leia bikini as your own personal harem. Come on, Merrick. (laughs) Kid show. Kid show. Don't care. Do not care. And the reason I don't care is in a couple of episodes later from now, Alex, we will have Taya in a bikini. You, no, I'm not even giving that. I'm not even giving kid show. <laughs> Personal harem had to happen. So that that's the silly one. The second one, I think, actually does have merit. Why did Merrick discover that Joey had a sister? Because here's the way that I'm going to assume the Millennium Rod works. You invade their mind in order to control their mind. And when you start controlling their mind, their mind becomes an open book to you. Why did Odeon have to tell you that Joey had a sister? He should have known that. Either from Joey or from Taya. Both of them knew it. So a plot hole, I guess. So, yeah, there you go. It's a tiny plot hole, but I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. Or, I mean, you know, I I have seen people throw this out in Reddit, Brinton, so I'm going to give you this. Uh, you know, a lot of people suspect because of the way Merrick's outfit looks, maybe he's gay. So why didn't Joey come out in a Speedo? You know, that um, that was something that had crossed my mind. I'm not going to be completely <laughs> like, I'll be completely honest with you. Um, no, I'm actually... I, I just saw like a big debate of like that Merrick's <clears throat> gay because of, of the Namu outfit that he wears. So. I'm um I'm actually currently looking up what more like what does the Millennium Rod do in full just so that way I can like add some context I guess so if I I am listening I am sure. just also reading really well quick. no the primary function of the Millennium Rod is mind control um and yes. the, the only other way that we've seen it utilized is in Dawn of the Duel where all of the Millennium items are basically used as kind of like a very fast expedient trial process um so at that um, point like, adam you oh i'm i sorry to, i'm sorry to interrupt you are correct 
by extension, the Millennium Rod is also capable of mind manipulation, yes. allowing the owner to see and hear everything they do, telepathically communicate with others, look into their mind and memories, mm -hmm. trick their minds into believing that the rod Rod's owner wants them to do, render people unconscious, and leave portions of the owner's mind in people to control them, even without the item. Which is like what how... we'll see in the finals, because... Yeah. Merrick will take will from time to time take control of Taya. So yeah, yeah, and I was actually just about to read that. So, it, so exactly, exactly that. Uh, so again, my argument what stands. Why don't you have some kind of like hair and bikini just waiting in the closet somewhere? Well, additionally, what you also just said is, why does Odeon have to tell him he has a sister? He yes! should have already known. Yes, he should have known by then. Like. Odeon didn't need to tell him. He should have just looked at Odeon and went, I already know that, you fool. Um, and instead, no, that's not what he did. So, yeah, there's already a couple of big plot holes here. And then I'm also going to throw this in here because this actually was a complaint of mine during this duel. Uh, I will continue to make fun of Taya's circumstances because they are so stupid. Uh, I, I get it. She was a mind slave. She sat underneath it. But like, Oh, yeah, I'm just going to press a button and this big box is going to come down on her Looney Tune style. There's no way that any of the cast of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, series are going to be able to stop you from pressing that button. Whereas the manga actually did it better, because if Brinton can remember, um, the way that they basically secured no interference was instead of having the stupid box... Uh, Taya had a pill of cyanide put between her teeth. And so much as Holy any shit. Yes, it's in the it's in the manga. Uh, in fact, you you're feel free to look it up. Uh look up I the believe panel. you, of course, because I know no, it's pretty twisted. But yeah, Adam, Adam, Adam's not wrong. He this this is completely accurate information. And that yeah, is a yeah, lot more it. menacing to me than having you know big crane hold a, a box over because at any given moment like she has this very flimsy capsule of cyanide between her teeth so at that point any kind of interference by kaiba whatsoever um she immediately crunch and and then at that point Taya's is dead so how they resolve it in the manga i'm curious now um she, that i don't she remember doesn't use it. <clears throat> she ultimately oh. doesn't use it. Um, I can't remember like if she spits it out when she is freed or or something like that, but uh, she okay, ultimately so just, like, just doesn't did... use it. Okay, so like they did break the possession early like they do in the anime? Is that how it worked? I, I, at some point, I would assume, but I mean, in the anime, yeah, they break the possession early on. My guess is that Merrick basically controls them in the manga the entire time. So okay. he, she, he, yeah. he doesn't just control Joey. He controls both Taya and Joey at that point, which to me is a lot more medicine because at that point, like he is showing his power that he can m not only manipulate these two as mind slaves, but he also is man manipulating all these other rare hunters to be able to go out and do his will kind of thing. So at that point, the, the circumstances of Taya in the anime kind of destroy that aspect for for Merrick. I know I've made this argument numerous times, but it is a big deal and I I I like my villains and I like my villains being portrayed as villains. So that that's a big deal to me. Um I th I think we've gone over the the negatives quite a bit that we could take a little bit of a break for a bit and and we'll go into the side plot here which Joey or uh, Joey Alex brought up. You're now Alex Wheeler. <laughs> you're now, yes. <laughs> you're Alex Wheeler now. Uh, oh, work on the Brooklyn exit. <laughs> your Brookstralian exit. <laughs> Brookstralian tailian exit. Yeah, exactly. With a bit of southern. Because <laughs> you got to have the Balboa in there, too. Uh, <laughs> so at that point, um, you brought this up, Alex, but ultimately, mm -hmm. uh, crap, I literally just had a lump in my throat and I completely forgot where I was going. <laughs> oh shoot so, <clears throat> no you brought this the the side story the, the side plot where basically carrying over from the previous episodes uh serenity is making it to battle city 
And at that point, Tristan and Serenity run across the rare hunters because now Merrick wants to find Serenity, probably to add to his harem. Um, and in turn, they basically spend a majority of the time, safe to say, running from the rare hunters and then eventually getting assistance from both Duke Devlin, who hasn't been seen since Dungeon Dice Monsters, as well yeah. as my da my Valentine, who apparently was a cast member of Initial D, and I didn't realize it because she is like a god of Tokyo Drift. So <laughs> uh, try and explain that to me. But um, yeah, so you have the side plot going on that ultimately actually has the final say because Serenity, ulti Serenity ultimately saves Joey and through her swimming experience is able to bring him up after uh, he goes down because spoiler alert, uh, the results of the duel are actually a lot more open ended because both Yugi and Joey technically were ready to go down, but only Joey did. Because Joey was an idiot and didn't unlock his own ankle cuff. Yeah, it's typical Joey stupidity right there. But we so let, let's bring this up. Like, what did we think of the side plot of Tristan trying to bring Serenity to this duel with Joey and Yugi. And also I'm going to add in the additional concept that Taya kind of threw in where, Oh no, you can't see Joey in this state. It will traumatize you forever. Serenity. You have to wait on taking off your bandages. That's uh, pretty part of the course of Yugi. Although it, it kind like of is. That. Yes. Um, I I'll give some props to the fact that they actually did give Serenity something that she could add to the friends group. And the fact that she's not just, you know, Taya Jr. She actually has swimming experience and um, she is in some cases much like Joey. So at that point, you do get a different character. It's not just the other girl of the group. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll give that. Um, Brinton, what, what did you think about this side plot? You skipped um, it. Uh, yeah, 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 I did. <laughs> 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 well dang man then you totally missed out because you missed out on duke devlin getting to second base with serenity <laughs> well i um i mean i i did see i did see a moment where he was holding her hand and tristan getting all like upset and angry and it just made me think of the last episode where we had all established the fact that he was friend zoned. So I'm sitting here and I'm just like, why do you care? Oh, and then you, <laughs> then you missed the moment where uh, Duke got a totally cop a feel on, uh, on Serenity. Oh shit. Yeah. I, I don't care that. guys that it was like a knuckle touch or whatever. Sorry. Boob touch is boob touch. So second base right there. Oh my, well, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, and, and that is ultimately the goal of Duke and Tristan. Uh, if, if Enter the Shadow Realm has taught us anything, is that they are both trying to uh, earn the, the bonus points with Serenity, and ultimately Tristan gets it. So, F you, Duke Devlin. I don't know why we <laughs> hate you, but we do. <clears throat> so, I mean, yeah, the side plot isn't... It's not bad per se, but the only contributing factor that it adds is in the end where Serenity goes and saves her brother because her brother has saved her so many times. So now they get to kind of even things up a little bit, which is funny because she doesn't show up after battle city. And there's a couple of dozen times that Joey could have been saved in uh, places like waking the dragons. Just saying. So at that point, let's actually uh, let's get into any notes or any additional negatives that we have here. Brinton, do you have any notes for this? No, I I've stated everything that I felt like I stated everything that I wanted to say. I this in I think that this duel was completely unnecessary. <clears throat> yes, um, I do have my notes. Alex, do you have any? Yeah, I. I want to echo what you said like earlier where this is really just another variation of the find yourself you're in their fight plot yes and that's exactly what this and that's why a lot of this duel is pretty boring because mm. it's mostly just yugi doing that so, yeah th this so that format doesn't really like like this format of storytelling just doesn't work with what's going on here so at that mm -hmm. point like <clears throat> it 
if it was in a a different kind of format, like say, um, an, another good example that that was done was like when Sonic Sat AM did this. It made sense for that because they actually made the mind controlled individuals like an actual antagonist for Sonic to have to deal with. That's not what's happening here. Uh, Merrick's very detached from this, and therefore. Uh, when he sets a time limit to it, it's just like, of course the time limit's going to be broken. What are you talking about? Right. So it, it, that definitely it definitely hurts it. And so, yeah, I, I appreciate that, Alex, you're kind of corroborating what I was saying there. Uh, any other notes that you wanted to, to point out? Pretty much it. All right. So um, I'm usually the rules lawyer that goes into whether or not these duels actually follow the rules. And I have a little bit of bad news, people. For the most part, this duel followed the rules. So there will be two uh, there will be two fouls later on, much like Loomis and Umbra, and they're not going to be surprising. So we'll we'll put it that way. But let's go ahead and get into these. So yeah, I completely forgot it was Odeon who secured Mar- Merrick's ticket to the finals, because how dare he do the work? <laughs> Seriously, you could have just gone to like twelve random or twelve random citizens. Or actually, in the case of Bakura, 18 random citizens and gone, give me your locator cards. Okay. And you could have easily done it with very little effort. All yes. right, then. Wish you would have thought of that. Uh, lol. Oh, no. Yugi and Kaiba broke up again. And this is when they were having their fight in the helicopter uh, over the fact that Kaiba just doesn't care about Joey. Gee, I wonder why not. Uh, I also had no wow. problem saying the voice filter on Joey sounded absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it always does on anybody. I, think, I would but... actually say on some of them, it sounded pretty good. But on Joey, it sounded especially with the Brooklyn accent. It just didn't help. Just it just didn't make him sound demonic or menacing or anything like that. Uh, the next thing I had was, wow, I can only imagine the rage inducing poop Kaiba is currently having if Joey actually did have <laughs> raw in his in his deck. Because remember, that was like the only reason that that Kaiba was watching uh, is because not only did they have the Taya drama, but he was actually hoping that Merrick put raw in Joey's deck. I can only imagine the rage poop that he would have had if, if raw actually showed up. Uh, wow, death is actually a stake in this duel. Color me surprised, four kids. Because they didn't say that they would go down into the Shadow Realm. No, down to the bottom of the ocean. That's death, boys and girls. No, it's actually pretty amazing. They didn't try to weasel out of it. They didn't edit it. I'm actually kind of proud of them. Uh, so we, so, golf clap. Golf clap for four kids, everybody. (coughs) Uh, Yay! Kaiba, if you attempt to interfere in this duel, the ghoul, the girl who constantly scolds you will be killed via Looney Tune shenanigans. This is this is going to be a problem for me because Ka- it's very clear Kaiba does not like Taya because she constantly is scolding him and being the buzzkill to his victory parties. So why does he care? <laughs> like he doesn't like her. I don't know why he cares that she would die. I mean, maybe because Mokuba cares. I don't know. That's a bit of a stretch. Kaiba cares about what Mokuba likes. Yeah, that's a stretch. Yeah. Uh, seriously, the manga penalty for Teo was so much better. And like I just explained to you, it was a cyanide tablet in between her teeth. So yeah, but that, again, there's no way they were going to do that. In a there's show, no way they so. would have done it. But damn, it would have been great if like we got a, a battle city uncut. And it was actually that because that would have been so much better. Uh, so, wow, that's a really thin extra deck, Yugi. This is when he pulled out Slifer because uh, Merrick made it very clear he could not use Slifer. And so we get to see the extra deck that Yugi has, and it's a whopping two cards. <laughs> it is Slifer the Sky Dragon and Red Eyes Black Dragon. That's how much Yugi cares about Joey. He relegated his favorite card to the extra deck. And keep in mind, guys, this is when the extra deck doesn't mean shit. We're, we're not in 5D's era where the extra deck actually means something. I think I want to give Yugi a bit of benefit of the doubt on that one. At least, I just don't think he, I, I, I honestly like I'm being mean right now, but I just think like Slife, he didn't he hadn't been able to figure out a way to make Slifer work. 
and Red Eyes probably just didn't work with the synergy of his deck. I guess so, yeah. So, and maybe he also just didn't want to damage the card. So, uh, yeah, uh, good lord, I didn't notice the Karibo on Taya's phone. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't Shining Friendship, which is actually Taya's trademark card. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Shining Friendship is actually friendship. her, or what's the other version of it? I think it's called the Happy Lover, the the pink, pink version of Shining Friendship. Those are the ones that are always featured in Taya's decks, because if you ever play a Taya deck in Yugi games, it is majority fairies. Uh, so, you know, if you're surprised by that, then I don't know what to tell you. Uh, take a drink for every time Yugi brings up the stakes of this duel. Just kidding. I, I love you all too much. <laughs> you will be dead. <laughs> you, you will No, you will be dead and a half by the end of this. Uh, seriously, why does Kaiba care about Taya's survival? Oh, wait, he is, is running, just... he is running a big dual monsters tournament that could potentially ruin his company if if a high school girl died in the middle of it. Yeah, that was that's not technically more... caring about Taya. That's just caring about his company. So that that totally works with Kaiba. Well, isn't it just more he, he feels obligated just because Taya saved Mokuba? Maybe they but I. See, I still have a problem with that, but that's just because of, you know, what we learn about Mokuba in, in Enter the Shadow Realm, man. It's one of these days, Brenton, we have to just have Alex sit down with us and watch the Noah arc just to see how much of a douche nozzle Kaiba is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we, we really do need to have this happen. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, oh, yeah. So there we and here we go with the first foul. So there we go. It's Siren. <laughs> And the first foul is on Yugi. Spellbinding circle. Blah, 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 blah. For those who don't know what I mean, it's the exact same shit that I've called out before in the Arcana duel. Spellbinding circle does not take away 700 points. It just locks them. So that's why I said blah, 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 because it's the same shit. Uh, silly Duke Devlin, you should have used a D4 on the rare hunter. That would have totally shot his eye out. For those who don't remember, he shot a dice like right between the eyes to distract the rare hunter so that he could go and help with Serenity. And uh, for those who don't play D&D, there are much sharper dice that he could have used. And that actually would have been cool if we got a, a, a Yu-Gi-Oh uncut and all of a sudden, pfft, because he actually shot his eye out. That would have been great. Uh, seriously, with all the internal monologues, is Yugi even paying attention to the time limit Merrick set? And as you find out in later episodes, no, no, he's not. Nobody's paying attention. Uh, silly Taya, didn't you remember you used a Sharpie for that circle of friendship? So it took months to get off. <laughs> this is when it's she's referring back to their <laughs> to their friendship tattoo. <laughs> For those who want to who want to correct me, go watch that episode, motherfuckers. It's literally designed like a Sharpie. That shit was yeah. permanent is what I'm saying. I think he, I think that's even the little Karibo joke, isn't it? Yeah, it's the yeah. little Karibo joke. It's like, yeah, it's a permanent marker. permanent marker. It totally is. <laughs> she poisoned her friends. Oh, it's going to be fine. I don't think they'll be poisoned. Yes. Uh, this one actually was fun with funny with me where Duke was trying to get caught up with Tristan about what was going on and how they were basically whispering to each other to get caught up. Um, why are Tristan and Duke whispering in front of the blind girl whose hearing is obviously better than theirs? <laughs> I'm not really saying not she's enough. permanently she should... blind, but she's had bandages on her face for like days at this point. I'm sorry. That's enough time for your hearing to start compensating. So, <laughs> yeah, I got a point there. <laughs> So it's obvious and, and good little serenity. She's just like, I'm just going to pretend like I'm not hearing them talking about me. Come on. <laughs> I think she's she probably enjoys it. She's a teenager. She probably does. Actually, she's probably she's probably a lot more Valley Girl than than Taya is. Let's just be honest. Um. So good Lord, that long walk to give him the Millennium Puzzle. Fun fact uh, for all the people that love the intros that I do. Uh, that's actually what I was referencing with Brinton's. <laughs> that's the long walk of the Millennium Puzzle to to Joey. Because good lord, 
like the best part is, is when they did exchange the turn earlier. Oh, that went by fast, didn't it? <laughs> but no, the Millennium Puzzle took forever uh, to give to, to Joey. Uh, poor Red Eyes. It's just as bored as we are watching this duel. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm referencing is okay. I get it. the The attrition card was used on Red Eye, so it was like down to what 300 points. So it was supposed to be like super sick and. Uh, but I'm sorry. I looked at its face. I'm like, wow, you are just as bored as I am right now. Uh, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> I love this concept, and I hope that this happened in Yu Gi Oh Season Zero. So for those who don't know the origin story of the friendship between Yu Gi and Joey. Joey and Tristan used to be bullies to Yugi. And then uh, after Yugi completed the Millennium Puzzle, he made a wish for friends. So like, because he's not supposed to have friends up until that point. And one of the things that anchors them together is that a bully starts to uh, start harassing Tristan and Joey and Yugi stands up for them. Here's what I'm talking about with that bully. I don't know if anybody knows this, but Dan Green played the played, played the bully. I hope that was in <laughs> I hope that was in the season zero episode too, because that is just so funny to me. Oh my gosh! It was Dan Green. So the 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 uh, pu or the Pharaoh played the bully. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the irony of casting sometimes it's great. Okay, okay so the, the dubbed season zero so. <laughs> I thought it did get dubbed, but I thought a few episodes did. No, they wouldn't have ever touched that with a 10 foot oh, pole. Dude, they needed to do that if for no other reason than to have Dan Green do that dub. Okay, so this is the point where I started getting annoyed with the episodes. Good God, this there's actually a timer and they wasted 45 minutes! <laughs> I was actually <laughs> contemplating in my head, like, do they actually have a timer set? Because they have the boxes. <clears throat> and those are tracking the life points, but do they actually have a timer <coughs> that is keeping track of the 60 minutes? And then all of a sudden we start showing that timer. I'm like, holy shit. And they have wasted three quarters of it, obviously. Wow. Merrick sucks at the Millennium Rod. This was in particular. Um, th This sounds like a really a little gripe here, but to me, it is a big one. Because how many times has Merrick had somebody break away from his control? Quite a few times if you count both Bandit Keith as well as all the times Joey broke away. But at least with Bandit Keith, it looked like Keith was getting some kind of punishment when he broke away from the control and, and Merrick got it back. And Merrick is like threatening this the entire, you will stay under my control or I will hurt you with my Millennium Rod. And he does nothing to Joey. Nothing it's until the absolute very end where he, quote, shatters his mind. But guess what? Joey gets better. Because Rocky Balboa, I guess. <clears throat> but yeah, that, I guess just so. got, that got so annoying after all. I'm like, dude, you have this Millennium item. Pegasus is using his item better than you. I'm pretty sure Shoddy with the Millennium Key is using his item better than you. Uh-huh, for sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure Ishizu is using her Millennium Necklace better than you. Uh, Tristan was only mad at Duke because he got to first base first. So this is me, me talking about the, uh, first of all, because first base is hand holding. So you got to that point. Uh, and he got to hold her hand before Tristan did. So obviously Tristan was pissed at that. And then I went, oh, wow. Second base already. Nice work, Duke. <laughs> because I don't care if it wasn't just like a straight up squeeze. The fact that you basically grazed her boob with your hand. Yep. That's second base. As far as I'm concerned. Duke is the ultimate Casanova, is all I'm saying. And then also, <laughs> how did Mai get a freaking car in Battle City? I'm pretty sure all duelists were banned from having cars. How did, how did, okay. I might have answered when my own question banned? internally. <laughs> Boobs. That's how Mai got her car in Battle City. That's probably how it happened. Maybe it's some she, something she's always had, Adam. We don't know. We don't. Yeah, we actually. Welcome. Here's the thing, Britton. We don't actually know because when we first saw her, she was walking. So she yeah, might she could have. She could have parked it somewhere, shown up to the start of Battle City, and was <coughs> like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, pretty much." And so she had a car 
in Battle City. Uh, I'm kind of surprised it wasn't cherry red. Instead, it was blue. Probably baby blue, um, if I were to take a guess. And then also, I, I made this joke earlier, but I had to make it in my notes. Wow, did mine come from initial D? Because that's some serious drifting going on. <laughs> and then I, I have to show this to you guys because I didn't realize this. But somebody I was joking with somebody else before this podcast, and they actually did showcase to me there might have been a character that closely resembles my. So give me a second. I'm just going to bring this up right here. Wow, that girl on the right sure kind of looks like my, doesn't she? It's confirmed she was an in initial D first. Oh, my God. <laughs> really? And and this picture does not help with that in the slightest. Uh, let me see if I can magnify that one. Yeah, that's pretty much my, but like with a different hairstyle. Right there. So it's official. I, mean, I can I can kind of see it. Oh, uh, I, I mean, it could be worse. Um, I, let me see if I could actually. I don't know if they have this image of that yet. No, no, they do. <laughs> there you go. My in a bikini for everybody. <laughs> but with a different hairstyle. So, OK. I guess I was right. My was an initial D first. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Merrick's strategy to wait out the timer is actually the best thing he did in the entire duel. And this was when they were like down the last five minutes. And Merrick is just like, you know what? We're just going to wait this out and you both die. And it's totally cool. I actually I had respect for Merrick at that point because that's really what he should have done. The entire time he should have he shouldn't have like loaded Joey's deck with a bunch of rare magic cards. He just should have sat there on his ass for 60 minutes and just let the time run out. I mean, am I wrong? Nah, I don't think you're totally wrong. He could have just stalled in. Uh... The, the only thing I'd be worried about is like, could he have technically won the Millennium Puzzle at that point? And that yeah, that's I guess that's the debatable part. Because I don't know if, yeah. if that would have if that would have qualified, but maybe it did. So here comes our second and last foul of this duel, and it is on Joey slash Merrick. Skull dice, blah, the freaking blah. I've said it before. I ain't saying it again. You guys can go listen in previous episodes. He used skull dice wrong again. So there you go. It's a foul. I mean, I think at this point, he's always going to use Skull Dice for all. Yes, he actually probably will. Uh, and then I had to say this, like, this was near the end. I'm like, this duel is like nails on a freaking chalkboard! Because it just went on for way longer than it should have. And it should not have ever happened. <laughs> not have been four episodes, that's for sure. And then, and then during the last little bits of the duel, I honestly, I shit you not, I had like this weird epiphany where I actually asked two honest questions that I wanted to ask you guys. If Serenity took the bandages off and cried at Joey looking like a psycho, would that have broken Merrick's control? It might have, who knows? I actually think it might have worked. I think it might have because serenity like means more than anything to Joey at this point. Like <clears throat> I get that in waking the dragons, like my means a lot to Joey. Uh, but in this particular arc plus duelist kingdom, serenity means the world to him. So I think honestly that probably would have broken it. They should have just let her take the bandages off and get traumatized. An interesting idea. Yeah. <laughs> I know I make it sound so good, right? Let's traumatize the teenage girl. <laughs> yeah. Like everybody, honestly, that girl has already been through so much and everybody treats her like a baby. <clears throat> I bet she Kinda, wouldn't yeah. have been traumatized. Like, I don't think she would have been as traumatized as um, Tristan and everybody else was saying. No, I think that if she had taken her bandages off sooner, that she would have been like, what's going on with my brother? And then I think that would have snapped Joey out of the mind control way faster yeah. than the pathetic attempts from Yugi. Uh-huh. I'm glad somebody else agreed that those attempts were pathetic. 
oh, I'll remind him of his favorite card and then let that card get trashed endlessly. I'll give him my Millennium Puzzle because he totally cares about that. Kind of. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually I think I think we're both right on this one, Brenton. He, they should have just let I think in all honesty, Joey would have been more traumatized than Serenity would have. Because Serenity would just be like, what the fuck are you doing, Joey? And then at that point, that might have slapped him out of it. So that would have been good. Here's the second question that I had. Let's just say for the sake of argument that the manga version of, of Taya's punishment was in play. Honest question. How many times should Taya have died from talking and accidentally swallowing the cyanide pill? Well, yeah, but that's why it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> well, that's why it would have been vastly different. I mean, yes. Honestly, I, I, she wouldn't be talking. I honestly like looked at my head. I'm like, at least ten times at this point, because she yeah, she but, just couldn't shut her mouth. All right. Well, yeah, she wouldn't be talking anyway because she no. would have the pill in her mouth. She so. would have had the pill in her mouth, and and Merrick would have been controlling her to make sure yeah. that, that she didn't swallow it. Swallow it. Uh, this was the point where we had a ton of flashbacks of Yugi's friendship for all those people who totally don't know that all these moments happened. So. Many goddamn flashbacks. Uh, and then also, this is the point where I, I basically lost all my patience. Uh, so this was the point where Kaiba, in response to getting Taya out of the situation, throws his blue eyes card at the the rare hunter's wrist to get him to drop the controller for the for the crane, and then tackles him. I have to ask this honest question. Why the fuck do you care about Taya, Taya Kai, Kaiba? You, there's no reason for you to care. And no, I don't think Mokuba was enough motivation, especially to throw his blue eyes at him. That was dumb. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, my negative. Oh, that no, no. It's going to get stupid. it's going to get dumber, Alex, because right as that happened, I had an ADD moment. Yeah. What if Kaiba's blue eyes card bounced off the rare hunter and into the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> Would that basically be of... that Wheeler's permanently disqualified? It might be. Because he totally would have blamed that on Joey. Of course he would. Another rage inducing poop. All right. Uh, then this this was one of those moments where uh, so I imagine this happening when Yugi got given back the Millennium Puzzle. And uh, the second that, like, the chain hits his neck, of course, now he's resumed con uh, contact with the Pharaoh. And so this is the Pharaoh screaming at him. You had one damn job, Yugi! That's it! I'm taking over the remainder of your duels until I do something stupid! Like, I don't know, lose your soul or something! Fun Too fact. <laughs> yeah, fun <laughs> fact. This actually does happen. <laughs> So, but I, I would have loved that if, like, all of a sudden, if little Karibo made the joke of, like, you had one damn job, Yugi! <clears throat> Just have him screaming at him. Uh, and then, and the dumbass of the duel award goes to Joey Wheeler for being a Nimrod and not taking off his ankle cuff before saving Yugi. <laughs> this is how you know it was a stupid thing, because they literally animated him, like, jumping across, and then the ankle goes down, and he goes, uh-oh, uh what? Uh <laughs> Come on. Of course he didn't do that. And then also, good God, just drown Joey for feeling sorry for himself already. That'd be way more entertaining than what's going on right now, which was the whole thing of Joey feeling sorry for himself because he got mind controlled by the villain. Even his sister looked at him and went, uh, yeah, dude, grow up hair. She basically did. Am I wrong? I didn't even notice. Yeah, because he's like, I can't believe I got mind control. She's like, dude, girl pair. Shit happens. I don't care. Uh, then also I had Joey didn't notice that Serenity was looking at him the whole time. Yep. Drown him. Serenity gets first dibs on drowning. He didn't notice that when she literally picked him up out of the water, her eyes were open and she was looking at him. I don't blame him for that, Adam. He was probably super disoriented. Well, he was too busy feeling sorry for himself. As we see with episode continuity, because he felt so bad for himself for being mind controlled by the villain. So, <clears throat> but then at that point, yeah, I think Serenity gets first dibs on drowning him. Uh, and then also, I had to make this joke because 
of course, near the end of the episode, the Pharaoh comes back. And technically, this is like Serenity's first time ever meeting Yugi. So Alex will have to pardon me, but I had to do this. So this is Serenity saying, wait, did Yugi's balls drop in like five seconds or something? I should really check and make sure. <laughs> yeah. Just, I'm basically referring back to little Karibo. <laughs> it's like, did you just go through puberty in 10 seconds? <laughs> <coughs> Except now I'm doing it with the Valley girl that is Serenity. I should really check and make sure. I'm sure you should, Serenity. And that's all the notes that I have on it. Um, so at that point, let's go into our final scores of it. Out of five, what would you give friends till the end? So this is the entire duel of Yugi versus Joey Merrick. Jarek? Moe? Jarek? Not- <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm going to get comments now, aren't I? <laughs> for for Moe. Oh, that was... That was- <laughs> So random. <laughs> I mean, Jarek was great because he's like a Mortal Kombat villain, but Moe? Oh, shit. Moe. Yes, my favorite show, Moe yo. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Moe yo, yo. Um, oh so, my god. So I have no problem saying this 0. 0.5 out of 5. There's just. <laughs> There's very little holding this together for me. This is just not something they should have done. Uh, I hope I've made clear why I don't think these episodes worked. Uh, but yeah, 0. 0.5 out of 5 for me. Alex, where are you at? I'll give it a 1. Okay. So he's a lot more charitable than me this time, guys. <clears throat> um, Brinton, out of 5. Zero. Zero. Wow. Okay. So there is no redeeming factors whatsoever in these episodes for you. It it, it shouldn't have happened. If any, like I watched all of it just for the sake of talking about it today. Otherwise, like after, like after maybe an episode and a half, I would have just stopped and been like, come here and been like, sorry guys, I didn't care to watch the rest of it. Totally pointless. Yeah. This, this is one of those episodes that I like, I revisit Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot because, like, even listening to it, it's still very awesome to be able to listen to. <clears throat> but this this episode, I always skip <clears throat> because there's just there's too much wrong with with this format not being able to work. So at that point, I always skip it. And I was hoping that maybe like with Loomis and Umbra or with uh, with Joey and Mako, I'd find some redeeming factors. Not really. I I actually ended up kind of reaffirming why I don't like these episodes, <clears throat> especially when you like, if you guys want to see a legitimately really good duel between Joey and, and Yugi go back to duelist kingdom. That is such a much, such a better duel than this. And it's primarily because it actually is Yugi and Joey fighting off against each other, but also showcase a, a better showcase of Joey's growth as a duelist during that because like that that episode will always be better than this as far as i'm concerned <clears throat> especially with the opening song that that i still have that mp3 somewhere to this day and i love it so that being said so we, we're all pretty much in in hatred of this episode um before we actually highlight what the next one is uh we're going to be adding a new segment to these episodes because of you guys uh you guys have actually been reaching out and asking questions of us when we do these episodes. And for some reason, the question that we're going to go into today was flagged by YouTube as inappropriate and thus was taken down before I even got to say anything on the matter. I don't know if you know this, Brenton, but this is like a new thing for YouTube is I did it. They will. The, this this is new to me. So go <clears throat> yes. ahead. So like me and Alex have both had this issue, right, Alex? Yes, it's happened to me before too. As like well. where somebody leaves a comment to us, we might get an email notification, maybe, but YouTube will basically prematurely decide whether or not it is quote appropriate, and they'll take the decision out of our hands. So at that point, that I will lose the comment, and it's very frustrating to me. Because I will then get people going, oh, well, you're banning the comments. And I can literally show you guys I'm not. I, I don't do that. I, I, as, soon as, I, I see, as soon as I see a comment is up for review, I'm usually flagging it as okay. 
Um, but then there are times like this where it's just like, oh, thanks, YouTube. You've now given me an extra headache that I don't want. <clears throat> and this one in particular happened with the uh, Yuki versus Arcana duel, which just recently went up. Yes, I'm that far back in editing. You can all make jokes. Um, oh, wow. You, sorry, I, I didn't. I, yeah, I'm, I'm that backed up in editing because of my work schedule and everything like that. I, I try no, very hard. No, but... you're. I'm no, very... you're fine. I'm just real. I'm just realizing we've done eleven duels, and that was number six. So. Yep. Yep. And technically, I'm I'm actually editing duel number seven at this point. So we'll we'll get to this eventually, but we will also be answering these questions from here on. So this is the one that got taken down by YouTube. Now you guys can tell me what part of it is offensive. All right. right. So since we are currently doing the Battle City duels. Have we watched any of the other Yu-Gi-Oh! series that have happened since Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters or the original Yu-Gi-Oh! And what are our opinions? What are our favorites of them? Yeah, that's totally offensive, isn't it? Weird. Why did that get flagged? Because that is YouTube. Really at a loss. Because how... YouTube is freaking YouTube. How I... interesting. So, I'm offended. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know. We're all just so totally offended, right? And Alex is crying off in the distance, right, Alex? <laughs> right. Right, right. Um, so I can tell you from my experience, I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! GX when it was on Cartoon Network. Uh, I only watched the first couple of seasons. I don't think anything else got put onto Cartoon Network because half of the series of GX is actually not dubbed. Um, so like a lot of the good stuff that everybody loves about GX was never dubbed. I haven't seen that. And if you, if you guys have been listening on our live streams, I actually have tried out Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, AKA card games on motorcycles. And it's actually not bad. I actually don't mind it all that much. It's, it's a very serious kind of take on Yu-Gi-Oh! While, while also having some of the more serious tropes. I have watched all of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, but if I were to say that there is a favorite, eh, probably the original, uh, just because there's a lot of dueling arcs and everything like that that I enjoy out of it. But from what I've seen of, G of GX and 5Ds, I like it. Um, it's actually gotten me interested in seeing other series like Zexel and Vrains and Arc 5 and all that when I get some time. Uh, Brinton, what about you? What, what have you seen of the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! series that have happened? Um, was it Yu-Gi-Oh! G GX after Battle City? No. Um, so the original Yu-Gi-Oh! had all the way up until Dawn of the Duel before it ended. And then GX happened after that. And that was that didn't even go to Kids WB, I don't think. Um, it went straight to Cartoon Network. I um I remember I don't remember Dawn of the Duel. I remember watching uh quite a bit of GX. Mm -hmm. Um however at that point in my life I was uh how old was I? I think I was starting to get out of like card games and my interests were dramatically changing. I think I was 14 or like somewhere between ages 13 to 15. Right. Uh, I remember, I remember finishing battle city and then that's kind of where Yu-Gi-Oh fizzled, fizzled out for me. Uh, okay. I even stopped like, like I stopped watching Digimon Pokemon. I was just keeping a lot of my interest to myself. Okay. Um, yeah. So at that point, would you say like your favorite is just the original or did you like GX better? I I watched very little of GX. I really did prefer, um, like I per, I I really just enjoyed Yugi and Friends. So the yeah okay. the original. Okay. Uh yeah, and, and it's kind of the same for me. I I don't mind GX. I actually like the idea that they had the philosophy of like we're gonna have a duel every episode, and we're going to try and and keep them as short as we can. But uh, in a lot of cases, you do have multi part duels, but it makes sense for them to be that way. But no, nah, there's just there's tons there, especially um, my favorite arc of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! is Waking the Dragons. I just think there's so many good duels in that filler arc. And it is a filler arc, by the way, guys. Uh, I know that it's sacrilege for me to say that a filler arc was good. But in this case, fuck yeah, it absolutely was. 
Um, there are some filler arcs that are good. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you do you, man. Yeah. Uh, Alex, what about you? Uh, I know that you've seen the original Yu-Gi-Oh, but I don't think you've really branched out aside from that, have you? No, not really. I'll, I only watched Duelist Kingdom and partly into Battle City. I don't even think I ever finished Battle City. When yeah, we, we've mentioned this air. before. Like, you, you, he's never seen Noah. He hasn't seen Waking the Dragons, Dawn of the Duel, any of that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, my interest in Yu-Gi-Oh kind of just tapered off pretty fast. Uh, yeah, and there's there's so nothing no. wrong with that. Um, and then there's a second part to this question, which is like, now that we're doing these podcasts, would we be interested in maybe going and doing the Noah arc or going and doing Waking the Dragons or Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains or or something like that? And from my perspective, I would have no problem doing that because like. I've actually, I have no problem saying this. I'm enjoying way more. Like, I I don't mind doing the monthly podcast, uh, but this is a lot more enjoyable to me being able to just like sit there and talk the shit with you guys about what Yu-Gi-Oh did right, what Yu-Gi-Oh did wrong, what Shield Hero did right, what Shield Hero did wrong. Because then at that point, I don't have to be like 100% negative all the time because I like being able to find like redeeming factors in an episode and being able to say, well, you know, this, this thing story-wise is happening and I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, so I would have no problem doing it. I think with Alex, that would be a tough sell, wouldn't it? Cause you're like, you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, but not that big of a Yu-Gi-Oh fan. Yeah. Uh, it probably, I can't say that it would be, I'm open to it, but I can't say I'm that eager to jump into it either. Cause mm-hmm. You know, there's still a lot of other stuff I'd like to anime wise. I'd, I want to watch that have more of my interest than. And that, so, that's than the other thing here, to too, is like the, the reason that we limited things to the Battle City duels instead of the entire freaking arc is because we did want to get to some other stuff, too. So at that point, like, I think if we went and did, let's just say, for, for example, Duelist Kingdom, at that point, we might have to do like the original format. Um, just because there actually is stuff that's happening in Duelist Kingdom outside of the duels that is important. Battle City, not really so much. So that would probably, and for Alex, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it would just be, we'd have to sell that to you, I think. Like, we'd have to explain to you, okay, here's how the Noah arc works and what it's supposed to do before you would even say yes or no. Is that right or wrong? I'd agree. That sounds right for me. Uh, Brinton, what about you? Uh, uh, but, but I don't know why I'm struggling to talk. I, I don't know either, but it's this, great. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I bet that just looks fantastic when you listen back to it later. <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, I guess since I would be answering this question for the person who left it, if you're listening, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, I, as of this recording, I am now two full weeks into mm-hmm. a two to three year graduate program. So once this is done, my contributions to the podcast <clears throat> are going to be solely monthly because I I do need to focus on school. So now that we are halfway through the duels that we plan on discussing, as mm-hmm. soon as we're done with the second half, it it's very much going to be unless I can make the time for it. Right. Most of my commitments are going to be school and school. <laughs> exactly. And so, so in, in, in respect to you, Brenton, I, I think the same thing of Alex has to be said of you too, because I, I think just given where your time is going, we would have to sell you on it. Um, because at that point, like if we, if somebody were to ask us like, oh, go, go try out Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds and go do the, the signer arc, <clears throat> um, like the dark signer arc, then we, I probably would have to explain to you at least a little bit of what is going on there and how many episodes and, and how much commitment that that would probably take. And that would be, those would be huge deciding factors. Um, the, I mean, here's the best example that I can give is like, once we were done with these, I was actually in talks with both Alex and Brinton about doing separate series on other Netflix series that we were both like me and Brinton and me and Alex were interested in, but maybe the other wasn't. 
So, for example, uh, one of the things me and Alex have talked about is as soon as Battle City is done, we would go and check out Sonic Prime because a number of people have reached out to us saying, like, you know, what do you guys think of Sonic Prime? And they were like, OK, so if we have some time, we could we could go and do that. And that wouldn't be a hard sell. Right, Alex? I agree. Yeah. And so for me and Brenton, we were actually talking about doing uh, Tekken Bloodline because, you know, Tekken 8 is on the horizon, even though it probably will be out long after we actually get around to doing that. But now with school, you know, something like Tekken Bloodline would be a little bit easier to do for Brenton because that's eight episodes long as opposed to Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, which would be like 25 to 30 episodes long. Um, that's a bigger time commitment and maybe something that Brenton can't make work right now. And maybe that's just something we can look at two or three years down the road, right, Brenton? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Something to that extent. So I'm not going to rule it out because I actually do like the idea we just have to make it work with our schedules. And that's that's the big thing right now uh, for me and Andrea. That's not a big deal because we can we literally can mold our schedules around. But for you guys, uh, Alex has a nine to five job. You have a nine to five job plus master's degree, all that stuff. So we're not saying no, but it's definitely not going to happen anytime soon. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. Um. That being said, <clears throat> that'll go ahead and wrap things up for this episode. So thank you so much uh, for the question. And if you guys want to continue to submit questions, feel free to do so on the Yu-Gi-Oh! episodes that actually do go up. I know that the next one, as of editing right now, will be Joey versus Weevil. So you guys can leave questions there and we'll answer things as best as we can. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you might just have to wait a couple of episodes before we get to it, but we will get to those questions because I have no problem answering those. In the meantime, though, if you're brand spanking new to this podcast, first of all, welcome. We're happy to have you. Uh, feel free to give a like and a, subscri uh, like and a subscribe to YouTube. We really do appreciate that. You can also check out the live streams that we do. Uh, for me and Alex, we do Dracula Chat Alive where we're covering uh, Dot Hack, Legend of Zelda, Resident Evil, etc. You guys can check that out as well. Or as of recording this podcast, you also can check out when uh, me and the GNR crew, a.k.a. Alex and Brinton, get together to try out Asura's Wrath on Xbox 360. So you guys can check that out and see us laugh through a game that is absolutely fucking anime. Uh, I'm, I'm actually really excited to show this game to, to the both of you because, oh, we're going to have some laughs on this one. It's going to be great. But it, also, if you're brand speaking new, consider supporting the podcast on podcasting platforms. We really do appreciate that. Either on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Amazon Podcasts, also on Spotify and Player.fm, and also any other platforms that we will have up until that point. I can't announce anything just yet, but we actually have some other things in the works. And yeah, continue to sh show your support in those ways. Be able to give us uh, uh, reviews on those. We really do appreciate those. And that'll go ahead and do it for us. And actually, the next two episodes are going to be really simple. So Brinton's going to love me for that because the next two duels are one episode long. Wait, mother. Thank you. Yes, exactly. I mean, I I, I think the four of us, well, the four, y'all, the three of us deserve it. <laughs> it's okay. We all have imaginary friends. There's technically six of us here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the next duel that we'll be, we will be doing is uh bakura versus bones so you guys can look forward to that because we are basically wrapping up the exhibition round for battle city and moving into the finals so we will have uh bakura versus bones and then uh the next one we will have is a my duel but i can never remember the guy's name uh I mean, we'll we'll talk about it. He's supposed to be like a Jean-Claude Van Damme kind of write in. So we have those duels and then we're going to be getting straight into Battle City Finals. So that'll be awesome because then we can get into a lot of the best duels of Battle City. So we hope you guys will join us for that. And until then, for myself, for Alex and for Brinton, we will see you guys next time for Bakura versus Bones. And uh, we have a feeling there will be lots of British accents that are going to be elaborating on feed type monsters and ghosts being played throughout. So that's going to be great, isn't it, everybody? 
<laughs> it's just going to be great. So I love great. the Decora voice. Uh, especially when he's not doing a horrible British accent like he is in 5Ds. Are you saying it's time to get dueling? 